thing. Uh, you might walk out of here saying, you know, that guy is cuckoo, 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 and that's fine. That's fine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But you're going to get the truth, and knowing the truth will set you free. Come on. Go ahead. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful and works have of no darkness. What? No fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, expose them, condemn them. Come on, 12. For it is now, a it says the un no, go back, go back. I got it because somebody's going to say something. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It says, condemn the practices, not the people who Amen. practice them. Did you catch that? Yes. Hate the sin, love the sinner. Amen. So we are not to have fellowship, not to participate. The NIV, I believe, says participate with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Yeah, it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And much of what? Halloween is about this dark day, All Saints Day, uh, <clears throat> at, which is tomorrow. This is Hollow Eve, is shameful and in secret. Secret societies having their, their, uh, their times of their incantations, their spells, uh, their sacrifices. Yes, we see the surface. And the surface, it looks cutesy and, and it's, it's, it's un- uh, it, it, Pastor, you're overreacting. Yeah, I overreact when it comes to something like this. Because my Bible says not to have any uh, uh, participation with the uh, works of darkness. And that's what this night is all about in the world. This night is all about Jesus in here. But in the world right now, it's all about what? Fear, darkness, and death. When Jesus is all about peace, light, and life, it's all about symbols and practices, symbols like witches and ghosts and goblins and, and, and brewing pots, broomsticks that fly, talking black cats, spells, incantations, what's going on around the city, even in this city, and even in some of our elementary schools today, in our schools today, this after, uh, well, Tampa on Sunday, they had their party uh, on Thursday. But what, what's going on? A lot of them have a budget set aside to spend for Halloween activities. But yet Christmas and Easter are vetoed. It's not unusual uh, for someone to come in and read, read palms and, uh, and crystal ball reading. It's all fun and stuff. But what we don't understand, it introduces our children to the demonic it introduces our children to the occult. Well, evidently, mom and dad don't think anything of it. They allow me to have my palm read, ha, ha, fun, 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 and, and scrying and Ouija boards and, and acts of levitation. And, and, and i never forget the time my daughter, and I don't have time for this, my daughter went to a, a, a party, and, and they were into levitation. They said, well, lay down, and five or six girls got around her and just put one finger uh, around her. And she says, Dad, I, I got afraid because I began to levitate. And she called, and immediately I went down and picked up my daughter and confronted the parents. And, and oh, boy, you don't, you don't even want to know what went on there. There was a broomstick flying, but it was flying in my hand. Hallelujah. And that was, that's what goes on. October 31st is a night where witches perform rituals. To try to tap into the demonic realm. They believe that it's on this eve that <clears throat> it, it's, the, it's, it's the one time a year where the veil is removed. And literally the, you, there could be connection with the occult realm, with the demonic realm. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I remember in the Bible, in 1 Kings, and we're not going to read it. We don't have time. 1 Kings 18, 26 through 28, it talks about when Elijah, the man of God, stared down 450 prophets of Baal. 
And they did all their incantations and all their dances. And they cut themselves trying to get a response from their gods. And there was no response. In fact, Elijah taunted them saying, what at, what's wrong? Is your God sleeping? Is he on vacation? What seems to be the problem? And that, that, that infuriated them even more. They're jumping and they're, and they're head banging and they're cutting their cells and producing blood. And nothing happened. But yet when Elijah got up and called out, Lord, fire came down. And the people fell on their face and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Woo, look at Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. There's a warning here. God does not want his people tampering with the demonic, with occult practices. We have been convinced that a lot of these things, how many were brought up with Casper the friendly ghost? There ain't no friendly ghost, just evil, wicked, demonic spirits. But yet our children would go through their homes singing Casper, the friendly ghost. And it turned out back in olden times there was a spirit, a wicked spirit, a general. His name was Casper. And every time these little kids would, would sing the song, they saw the cartoon, Casper, the, they would conjure that spirit. Casper, the friendly ghost. Can you imagine? Little Smurfs. You know what Smurf means in German? Little blue demon playing their music and, and, and looking to Papa Smurf for all their answers. We look to our Heavenly Father, who is the God of creation. Deuteronomy 18, 10, and 12, please. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. That's human sacrifice. Go ahead. Or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter. This thing, observer of times, astrology, and uh, what's that other one? Zodiac, uh, zodiac sign. Uh, my sign is I'm born again. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you, Gemini, or quasi, or look in my eye? I don't know. What is it? I don't know. Don't be reading those things. Why would you put your trust in something like that? Whether you're going to go out of the house, whether you're going to take a vacation. Why don't you call upon the name of the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, 11. Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are spirits that have been assigned to you since you were born. They're familiar with you. That's why when people say, when people say, well, I heard from Uncle Freddy at that seance. It was Uncle Freddy who said so. That's a familiar spirit. Well, he said things about my past and childhood nobody would know. That's a familiar spirit. That's demonic. Now, a lot of what goes on is just a hoax. They make money. Uh, but, some, but don't you understand? It, it, it brings an inquisitive mind. Inquiring minds want to know. And it's this day, this night of the year, that many young people are recruited into the occult. Because of everything. Hey, you want, let's, you want to come to a witch's party? You want to come to a Ouija party? You want to come to a, a seance? Come on, it's lots of fun. No, it's not lots of fun. There's hell to pay. Hey, how about you? You want to go to church? You want to go to a Bible study? You want to go to a harvest party at my church? Praise God. And verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. For all that do the these Lord. things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Look at Leviticus 19.31, please. Go ahead. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. These things are kids and we tamper with thinking they're light and, and, and just uh, child's play. Uh, they defile you. 
And God says, don't touch it. Don't do it. A lot of times they set up in malls and set up, or there were several here in town that have closed down. Uh, <clears throat> but they, they, they invite you to find out about your future. And people want to know about their future. What they need to do is look into the scale, the, the nail-scarred hands of Jesus, and he'll show you your future. It's a good one. It's a prosperous one. It's an eternal one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Retailers rejoice this time of year, not in the Lord, but in Halloween. Because on the darkest, spookiest night of the year, people have already spent over $3 billion to celebrate it. Just about $41.70 per household in the good old U.S. of A. $41 per household. Well, I'm not one. Of, it's an average. And what do they spend it on? Decorations, greeting cards, gory, bloody uh, masks and costumes and things like this. Now, you might be saying, well, there's a lot of nice ones, and we have some nice ones next door. And those are fine. But I dare you to go to any store you want to in town here, and the majority of what were, was on the racks is on the dark side. The majority. Now, you got the little uh, Tinker Bell and the little uh, this and that, and, and God bless you. God bless you. We're having fun at the harvest party. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. It's a good alternative. I encourage it. Look at me. I look like G.I. Jane. I mean, G.I. Joe. No, I said G.I. Joe. That's it. Now, a little bit about uh, the history. Originated with the ancient Celtic people of Europe and Britain. Their priests, called the Druids, would lead them in rituals and celebration on Hallow Eve or Halloween uh, night, which was the eve before All Saints Day, November 1st. This was a time that life turned to death, that summer turned to fall. That green living leaves died. So it speaks of life to death. Aren't you glad? When we, when our Lord speaks of, of being dead and then coming alive through him. Hallelujah. And alive forevermore. Praise God. And they also believe <clears throat> that this was a time where uh, souls of the dead would walk the earth. And they would celebrate with huge bonfires. Sacrifices were typical. And they would wear masks, not costumes. That was something that was brought in much, much later to make money. But masks. Why would they wear masks? Well, there's two principal reasons why they would wear masks. One was that they would scare these, these spirits away, these, these dead spirits, these dead souls away. They would scare them. Oh, no. The second was that they would blend in. By wearing these grotesque masks, they would blend in. They would be like them. Well, my Bible says, come out of the world and be ye separate. Don't be like them. Be like Jesus. A mask does what? It hides who you are. We're not to hide who we are. Who we are is we are in Christ, wonderfully and beautifully made. Hallelujah. And, and the thing with a mask, the thing with, with a mask is this. The Bible says there is one that masquerades as an angel of light. Yeah, he wears a mask. His name is Satan. Satan. 